So here we go. We're going to be talking about sugar and sweets. Uh, and by the way, um, this isn't going to be uh, a very long presentation. I'm thinking it's uh, 15 minutes probably. Uh, and then some time for some question and to check in with folks that are in our nutrition challenge. So welcome to the CrossFit Glen Burnie in Maryland, Healthy Steps and Nutrition, Saturday Nutrition Seminar, Sugar and Sweets. So my name is Coach Bob, and I'm the owner at CrossFit Glen Burnie and Maryland Strong Fitness and Nutrition. And we have Coach Andrea on today. We also have uh, Clara joining us today as well. So, so happy to have everybody. Today, we're going to share with you some shocking facts about sugar consumption, I review some of the more common sources of hidden sugar, and share some healthier options for some sweet treat, sweet treats. So my question to you is, who here has a sweet tooth? And what is your favorite sweet treat? All right, did you know that most people don't know how addicted we are to sugar? And we would be surprised to realize how much sugar there is in the foods and drinks we consume on a daily basis. And when we look at this, we're really thinking about most people that are out there. And here's some shocking facts. Sugar is arguably eight times more addicting than cocaine. And once you consume it, it hits the same trigger points in the brain, which makes you want more. You crave it. And uh, there's four grams of sugar in each single teaspoon of sugar. So let's think about this for a minute. Go to the movie theater. Well, wait, that's a bad example. Because if I go to the movie theater and I get a Coca-Cola, it's going to be really supersized. Let's just go, just get a regular 20 ounce regular soda as an example to put this all in the perspective. And we know how much sugar there might, we think we know how much sugar there is on in that soda. On average, there are 64 grams of sugar in a 20 ounce regular soda. And this equates to 16 teaspoons of sugar. According to the American Heart Association, it's recommended that women consume no more than six teaspoons of sugar, that's 25 grams, and men consume no more than nine teaspoons of sugar, 60, 36 grams per day. So this is Coach Bob whenever he drinks a lot of soda. Many studies show that a high consumption of sugar it's, is associated with inflammation and a lot of chronic diseases out there that are really causing us a lot of troubles. All the cells in our body, including cancer cells, need sugar or glucose for energy. And some diseases are linked to sugar consumption, such as diabetes and various forms of uh, cancer. So obesity by itself is also strongly correlated with sugar consumption and can account for at least 13 different types of cancer, including breast, liver, and colon cancer. So reading food labels is one of the best ways to monitor how much sugar uh, that we're consuming. And it can be disguised, sugar that is, in so many different ways on these sugar labels, like high fructose corn syrup or molasses or fruit juice concentrate and on and on. So we, we want to know what's in our food. And you can do this very simply by re learning how to read a nutrition label. Uh, they have updated the uh, nutrition labels now. So you can see the added sugar. So obviously there's going to be some natural sources of sugar in foods like milk and fruit. But there are also these added sugars. And like I mentioned, you know, even the American Heart Association is recommending limiting our sugar intake. The new nutrition labels make it very easy to identify how sugar, how much sugar is natural and how much sugar is added to packaged foods. So make sure 
that you read the nutrition facts and ingredient labels to know exactly what you're putting into your body. And once you start looking, you'll be surprised. Remember, when you're looking at the ingredients label, the first thing listed is the most ab abundant than the other ingredients. So the first three in ingredients in there really kind of give you an idea pretty much what that food is made out of. So be mindful about what you consume, read those nutrition facts, and limit the sugar in your daily consumption. And I challenge you to take a look at some of the foods that are in your pantry. Let's see if you can score 10 out of 10 without sugar. How much hidden sugar can you find? So let's cover the top three foods with hidden sugar. What are they? So the first thing we find is the convenience breakfast foods like oatmeal packets, Pop-Tarts, yogurts, cereals. For example, a single serve oatmeal packet has 11 to 15 grams of sugar per packet. And sugar is the second ingredient of Pop-Tarts. Well, this one should be pretty obvious. One package uh, that has two pastries in it contains 30 grams. 29 grams of which is added sugar. <laughs> and I don't even have to go here. Trix cotton candy yogurt, 14 grams of sugar. I don't even, I don't even know if there's really any real yogurt in there. And obviously a lot of the popular breakfast cereals on average have 10 grams per three quarters cup. So even though they're hiding behind that whole grains logo and all of that good stuff, there's still a lot of sugar that is being added. Well, number two food that you may find with the hidden sugars are going to be a lot of the protein bars that are out there. Um, 19 and a half grams of sugar in uh, this protein bar compared to the 12.6 grams that you would find in a Krispy Kreme donut. And I don't know about you, but I think that Krispy Kreme donut would be my first choice over this power bar just on the fact that it has less sugar but let's be serious. Number three thing, a lot of our, our liquids are going to have added sugar to them. So we got to be careful. Even these flavored creamers are a consistent source of sugar. This one has six grams of sugar per tablespoon, which maybe by itself is not a, a lot, but it can add up very quickly if you just pour it in your coffee. I mean, who only puts one tablespoon in there? Uh, or if you have several cups a day like Coach Bob. So I stay away from those and just drink my coffee black. <laughs> There's also a lot of uh, natural sweeteners that can have the coconut oil in them uh, as well as some stevia. And that's a, another way to avoid the added sugar. So sugar alternatives uh, for use in the kitchen. So here... Are, there are, of course, many different names for sugar. While some of them are being marketed as healthier than the others, they all contain glucose, which causes an inflammatory response in our body. Like, for example, honey, maple syrup, agave, all those things are just another source of added sugar. So here's some of our favorite sugar substitutes that we can use in the kitchen that will sweeten up our foods without providing extra sugar. First one being, yes, cinnamon. Cinnamon hits those same taste buds without adding any grams of sugar. So you can add those to your protein pancakes or your muffins or even in your coffee. Uh, the next one that is a nice, uh, I have over on the right is shredded coconut. Just be sure when you're getting your shredded coconut, that it's unsweetened. There's bags out there that are, the, of course, the sweetened confectionery kind. We want the unsweetened coconut. And that's great to add to your energy ball recipes or to sprinkle in your oatmeal. And it also has the benefit of adding a little bit of healthy fat. And right in the middle, I have some fruit puree like um, applesauce, no sugar added, um, this will uh, also help to moisten those uh, baked goods and can be used as a sugar substitute. So I got some healthy treats I wanna share with you guys. Uh, just some ideas that are out there, uh, like a 
fresh frozen or like fresh fruit, that's a good treat. Uh, you can even eat it frozen if it starts to get warmer. Um, even dehydrated fruit, you can bring with you on a trail walk or uh, when you're out and about. Here's one peanut butter and a banana nice cream. So you just throw that banana, uh, get it slightly frozen, mush it up and add a little bit of peanut butter. You can also look out for that low, uh, find that low sugar Greek yogurt, sprinkle on some chocolate chips or some granola, nice healthy treat there. And on and on. You can roast some nuts with a little bit of uh, cinnamon and cayenne pepper for a sweet and spicy treat. Chia pudding is also a really good option. Uh, you can top that with some fresh fruit. You can also get go crazy making, go crazy in a good way, making homemade smoothies. Just be aware of those commercial smoothies that are out there, which are going to be more than likely loaded with sugar. Out on our website, we also have um, we also have some healthy recipes and let's see here. If I go to my, uh, help out to our website at crossfitglenburnie.com, you'll see a healthy recipes listed there. And if you select our healthy recipes, then we have breakfasts, lunch, snacks, dinner recipes, vegetarian options, healthy treats. And some sides. And I was just wanted to highlight the healthy treats that are in there. We have chocolate chip protein cookies. We can have the casein pudding that I mentioned, dark chocolate avocado truffles, mini baked apple crumble, which is one of my favorites, and protein packed cookie dough bites. And I believe that's unbaked. So lots of great ideas and you can select in on that and it'll take you to the recipe. There's some cinnamon apples with a little bit of old fashioned oats on there. And it's a pretty simple, straightforward recipe. It gives you step one, two, and three. And you can follow along with them. So thank you guys so much. I did say it was gonna be quite quick and I did wanna save some time here at the end. Uh, to answer any questions or to hear about what some of your favorite treats are. So given that, I'm going to open it up to the group. We have Coach Andrea, Clara, and Cassie, who I just let in from the waiting room. Hopefully you weren't waiting too long, Cassie. Not too long. Thanks, Bob. And we will have this recorded and out to everyone so that you can watch it at your leisure while you're enjoying some healthy treat after a difficult workout. I don't know about you, but I'm sore all over from yesterday's workout. What is going on? I didn't, didn't know wall walks were going to really just hit me everywhere in the core. So how are you guys doing? Any good questions we have out there about our healthy treats, sugar and sweet? And I'd love to hear how the nutrition challenge is going for you so far. And we'll get you started on your day. So far, so good. Cassie said I look thinner this morning. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, doing good. I wish my I did. I can I can tell Andrea is tightening up. I'm feeling better. I have more energy this week, I feel like. Okay. Well, let's go with that. We know it's just the first week and we're just starting to get uh, some of that consistency in our nutrition. And so we're looking forward to week two. And I believe in week two, we're going to be focusing on starting to eliminate some of the added sugars in our diet. So you'll see that focus in there. And we're looking to build on our successes in week two. I was talking with Keith. He's, uh, he's also doing the challenge. And he cut out a lot of energy drinks and started to get to bed on time to get, and he's sleeping better and he's feeling better. And he's saying, you know, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I was like feeling better, like right away. <laughs> and again, we're just in week one, but when you, your, your body likes to get this hydration and all those cells on your body like that. Uh, those good, healthy carbohydrates that are low in sugar, high in fiber, 
And when we start eating the rainbow, and I'm not talking about Skittles, Clara, not Skittles, the vegetables, red peppers, green peppers, all that good stuff, our body just really starts to feel pretty good. Does anybody have any other questions, comments? I have a quick question. So you were talking earlier about coffee and the creamer having a lot of sugar. So normally when I drink coffee, because I cannot drink it black, I think okay. it is way too bitter. <laughs> um, normally I put almond milk and then some of the sugar-free sweetener. Is that a good thing? Does it still have added sugar? Okay. Or what could be some like yeah, replacements? So it depends. What is the uh, sugar-free sweetener have in it instead that makes it work out well, right? So there are some that have artificial sweeteners and there's some that have natural sweeteners. So do you, do you have it handy? Do you know what's in it? I don't have it near me, but I can go get it. Oh, good. Let's do it. There goes Clara. She's running to the kitchen, opening up the doors. Where is it? Here it is. Eight more steps. She's making her way back. Here she is. I love the play by play that Bob's giving. <laughs> All right, Claire, welcome awesome. back. <laughs> what's in this? Uh, like the ingredients or just what's on the nutrition facts? Uh, let's do the ingredients. Okay. Hopefully, I can pronounce all these. Uh, water, okay. corn okay. syrup, corn vegetable. Syrup. Wait, oat. number two. Wait, wait. What was number two? Corn syrup. Okay. Uh, vegetable oil. Less than two percent of the seller. I don't know. If yeah, I'm so we probably one. don't need to worry about the less than two percent because ninety-eight percent of it is made up of the first three ingredients, probably. Okay. So There's a whole lot of stuff I can't pronounce after that. So, yeah. And they're just trying to make it last longer on the shelf, mix better in your coffee, and some things like that. So number one, two, and three, water's fine. Unfortunately, corn syrup is out because that's just another form of sugar. In fact, it's probably worse than sugar. And then... Um, the third one is vegetable oil, which I would prefer to put um, a different kind of oil in my coffee. MCT oil would be better. So let's, let's go to the nutrition facts on there. And I know we didn't quite scratch the itch yet because we still need to enjoy our coffee. But let's, let's take a look at the nutrition label. What's it tell us for added sugar? Uh, so it says total sugars is zero grams and includes zero grams of added sugars. Wow. How do they do that, Coach Andrea? They are saying they have zero sugar, but the second ingredient on the label is corn syrup. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's, it's less than one, and so they put zero. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if it's very, 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 very little and it's less than a certain threshold, maybe they could just sort of say there's nothing. Um, so let's do this. Uh, I don't, you know, since we're live, uh, I don't want to bash a food company live. It would be so much fun though. Um, if I, if you could, Claire, if you could maybe post a picture of the creamer on either the group or in the message on the app, We'll do our research on that and we'll try to find some good options and I'll provide it as a challenge for everybody that's in the nutrition challenge to help, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of drive this all the way home to get as many ideas as possible to hear from the audience as far as what they're doing to sweeten their coffee and to make it good. Okay. We'll find some good options for you. I have some of my favorites, but I'd like to hear from everybody. Is that fair? Yes, I'm trying to post it right now. <laughs> okay, fantastic. That's a great question. I love it. Keep them coming because Clara, I know you have a lot of great questions. Did you try the blackened cod the other day? The black fish, white fish, I think was the recipe. 
I really liked it. I think next time, if we do another, I haven't looked at this coming week's um, plan yet, but if we do another day for black and fish, I'll probably do that tilapia that was originally on that recipe, mm -hmm. but it was pretty good. Okay, excellent. And what? Uh, why not the cod? Was it just too big, too thick, or too expensive, or something else? Neither. Just trying to find another white fish that I might like to to kind of have some variance later on. Okay, great. Cassie, any highlights uh, from either the past week or going forward, or any questions? I was um. I made, there was a recipe for like egg, egg muffins. And so I meal prepped those for the week and that was really good. I knew meal, meal prep was going to be the thing that I probably struggled with. Um, so it was good to have something healthy that I knew the macros to and could just grab in a pinch. That, that was good. Um, and I was thinking about it yesterday. I, I don't think I ate red meat all week, which is a departure from the norm for me. So that was, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Right. I mean, it kind of snuck up on you, right? So you're kind of following the meal plan with different ideas, trying things that are new and it's giving you more variety in your protein sources, which is good. Super. And I didn't miss it. I didn't miss the red meat, which was nice. I hadn't even thought about it until yesterday. So mm -hmm. that was cool. Yeah, super. So uh, I know in my freezer, I have uh, I have the grass-fed ground beef. I do have some ribeyes, that kind of thing. But we also have pork and chicken and salmon and some. Well, we had haddock, but it disappeared. So lots of different options there. I got a question for you, though, Cassie. The uh, breakfast muffins... We have uh, the muffin pan, and it has 12, um, 12 little muffin pan things. And we made, uh, we, we would make a set of 12 of those, right? Did you make 12 or 24? I think my muffin pan is smaller. I think I had, I think it's a mini muffin pan. Okay. So you get maybe 24 or 18 or something like that. I think it was 16 or 18. That sounds right. Maybe 18. Mm -hmm. And how many uh, muffins might you be having in a, a, a meal? Um, two see. or three of the mini ones. Yeah, I think so it was depending on. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to go pretty quickly. Now, the biggest problem that I have found with uh, breakfast muffins is everyone else in the house. At first, they're like, oh, yeah, you just do your muffins. And then they're all eating them. And they don't last more than a day or two and they're gone. So I don't know. So I had an, I had an easy week because Jeff was on work travel. <laughs> so, so maybe they'll disappear next week. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. So watch out for that. Cause it'll be like, Oh, that sounds really good. I had, uh, I had someone who started following the nutrition plan and uh, you know, where, when they were starting out, you know, everything was coming out of a box or uh, carry out Chinese food, pizzas and things like that. And they started to, uh, to cook and um, make, make the different things that are on the recipes and whatnot. And he, when he started, he said, you know, my, my son is never going to really eat any of these things, but I want to do what's right for me. And sure enough, he started to make these things and his son was like, Hey, that looks pretty good. What is that? That smells good. So anyway watch out for that thank you guys so much for checking in today if there's uh any other questions let me know otherwise have a great saturday Take hey kathy do you have a regular muffin tin um i do i think it was just buried under a bunch of stuff okay. <laughs> i was too lazy to grab it okay super duper Andrea, have you tried those muffins, breakfast muffins? What do you do for a, a nice breakfast snack? Um, yeah, I've made my own. I've made egg muffins before. Meatball muffins are also very similar to that. If you, you know, you, I think there's some recipes in there as well. They can go very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to get your protein. Uh, one of the, one of the things that we find uh, pretty challenging with folks is just getting enough protein during the day, especially if we're used to 
um, eating a lot of carbohydrates. So making that shift maybe takes some time, but finding ways to, to get enough protein and enough healthy fats during the day sometimes could be a challenge. Meal plan definitely helps with that. And some of the recipes like that are very convenient, like the meatball muffins or the breakfast muffins are a great way to do that. Um, I also, or the bone broth that I was sipping when you were asking if it was coffee. Oh, is that what was <laughs> going on? Yeah, very yeah. happy. Get your collagens in there too, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Take, my care, bone broth. take care of your body. And I know uh, Josh, who did the nutrition challenge last, um, last time we did one, really, really started making a lot of these soups and things like that. And he's been doing really well. Nice thing about the the soups, especially the broths, you can get the the bone broth. And it's an easy way uh, to add in lots of different variety of vegetables, protein options, and things like that. And you can make bigger batches and have them um, pretty much throughout the week and still feel great. Like you're getting a variety. Super. Well, thank you, everybody. We'll be back again next Sunday. Like I said, I have this recorded, so we'll share this out so that if you want to catch the first part, uh, if you missed anything, you're certainly welcome to do that. Thank you, guys. Take care and have a great Saturday. Bye now. Inactivity and poor nutrition steal away energy, make clothes fit poorly, and can even hurt relationships. CrossFit Glen Burnie provides the accountability, structure, and activities that help individuals lose body fat, gain confidence, increase performance, and reclaim health. CrossFit Glen Burnie delivers results for life.